So, Lynn, please join me here and say a few words about is it so simple with the emissions? Well, uh, no, as you've already hinted at, um, uh, in contrast then to the reduced territorial emissions or, or comparably low territorial emissions, uh, the emissions of carbon dioxide in other countries um, uh, caused by Swedish consumption are uh, increasing. They have been significantly increasing also over time. Over the last 20 years, we saw an increase in 50% of these emissions. Um, and this is then driven by our uh, large and growing import. Um, much of our imported carbon dioxide emissions come from other European countries. Uh, but there is also a growing share of embedded carbon dioxide import from countries like China and India. Uh, so from China, for instance, we import um, electric and electronic equipment that comes with quite high um, carbon dioxide um, embedded in it due to the current uh, energy mix of China. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, another example of um, a factor that influences our external carbon dioxide um, footprint is our meat consumption. Um, and now I want to change slide. Maybe you can help me, Katja, because... Yeah, thanks, this one. So here you see this total Swedish meat consumption uh, over the last 20 years. And as you can see, the uh, consumption of nationally produced meat, that is the blue, the dark blue, has stayed relatively constant over this period. Uh, whereas the red color, which is our imported meat, that consumption has increased. Um, now, I think this is an interesting example, uh, not only in, the, in terms of discussion of external versus uh, internal or territorial footprint, it is also really interesting because it highlights that this story uh, is not only about uh, creating cleaner and more efficient production systems, but it's also about lifestyle choices and um, uh, the volume of consumption. Mm. But it's about in import dependencies that actually mm. uh, bring the, the embedded carbon into Sweden, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, are there any drivers that could be tapped into here to, in order to reduce this kind of external footprint of, of a country or from Sweden or other countries? I mean, because trade volumes are, are in increasing and much more carbon is transported along those tr that are actually traded. I think that the major drivers that you mentioned, the A-list priority type of drivers, they can never be disregarded yeah. if you want to reduce your footprint. I mean, no matter whether it is a territorial or a consumption-based footprint, let's say. Uh, and we recently did a report for the Swedish EPA uh, where we looked at uh, uh, possible policy instruments and other measures that could be used to reduce the Swedish external footprint in terms of negative health and environment impacts in other countries. And uh, one of the key recommendations in that study was uh, to make sure that if Sweden, uh, and what Sweden does in this area is not only on the desk of the Ministry of Environment and Energy, but uh, rather becomes something of great concern also to ministries of finance and f uh, foreign affairs and uh, enterprise and innovation and so on. And this is not only then to uh, ensure a broad mandate uh, for any action plan, but also actually to open up for the possibility uh, that policies in other fields uh, that may have the potential to become indirect drivers for sustainability outcomes are actually tapped into with this work. Um, mm. And I, th I think that if you want to use closer to me, sorry, thanks, um, you can tap into these uh, indirect drivers of sustainability um, at various scales and maybe just on a closing note uh, to become a bit more concrete we were recently in uh, Cambodia uh, mapping um, improvements in chemicals management at the national level uh, and there was this uh, really important piece of legislation on pesticides and fertilizers that had been previously missing uh, and it became clear to us during this study that the primary driver of that piece of legislation to be put in place so quickly was not the international agreement and the commitments that Cambodia had to these, um, uh, where this is also asked for, but rather the new rice policy of the Cambodian government, uh, which aimed at uh, drastically increasing the rice exports. Um, and in order to do that, you need to sort out the situation of pesticides and fertilizers. So I think that was a clear 
clear case also when you see uh, other types of drivers achieving a more uh, a sustainability outcome in this case than in terms of improved uh, chemicals management infrastructure at the national level. Um, do you think there are many such cases uh, at play where, which we should know about? Uh, so is, I, is, it, is it common in your world, so to say, to, to see this, this confluence of, of, of interest between the um, economic growth or competitiveness type of, of, of motivation? I think in terms of chemicals management uh, that uh, business opportunities and market access is definitely a very important driver for sorting out uh, hazardous chemicals in a, um, in a company, say, or uh, in, a, in a sector. Mm. Thanks a lot, Lynn. We should stay with the, on the trade topic here. Um, and uh, please... Uh